Welcome everybody. I'm um, Ellen O'Brien Cushman. I'm the town clerk and tonight I'm serving as Zoom host too. So I'm trying to uh, make sure that I'm attentive in all directions here on my little computer. Um, we're joined tonight by Mike, um, moderator, Michael Widmer. And uh, Mike has been moderator in Belmont for, is it 12 years, Mike? 15. <laughs> 15. That's a long time. Yes. Yeah, especially he has to run every year. So it's it's pretty um, burdensome in some ways. Now all of you had to run once. Imagine having to get 50 signatures every single year. That's uh, how to get to be a, a moderator. So um, without further ado, we have, let's see, uh, 21 people on with us. That's great. Um, and uh, we expect it to be maybe up to about 45 minutes, depends on how many questions people have. Um, the structure for tonight is uh, different than the structure for the technology uh, meetings, uh, the Zoom and turning point meetings, which we all hope you are attending or have attended already. And um, <clears throat> tonight is going to focus on Belmont's town meeting in terms of serving as a, our legislature, uh, the kind of parliamentary process, as well as very specific things about how Belmont does stuff, a little bit different than uh, even the governing principles of town meeting time, which I know we referenced, and I actually have my book with me tonight. So uh, without further ado, Mike, you're up. And uh, by the way, I am going to just let everybody control your own audio and video at this point. Um, if it turns out that somebody is, uh, you know, jumping in, uh, their dog's barking or something like that, I'll try and unmute you. But other than that, feel free. Okay. Mike, you're up. Great. Thanks so much, Ellen, as always. Ellen's my partner uh, in these uh, town meeting enterprise. Um, and uh, it's always, it's a great tandem. And I appreciate her, all of her good work and the town clerk staff. Um, you know, it's wonderful that we have so many new town meeting members. Uh, I don't know if it's a record number, but it sure is uh, uh, impressive. A few years ago, people were bemoaning the fact that we didn't have enough people running for town meeting, how could we get more interest? And this year we had plenty of interest. And uh, as a result, almost a quarter, uh, sorry, a fifth, 20% of town meeting members will be new this year. And that, as I say, it, it, it's been a long time since we had any numbers like that, uh, maybe never. So congratulations on winning. And thank you for your effort to do this. Uh, you know, Ellen referred to town meeting, of course, as our legislative body. You know, our democracy operates obviously in a whole multiple ways, but at three levels, local, state, and federal. And I've been, I'm retired now, but my career was in government and politics and in Massachusetts. And so I've been dedicated personally to working in, in dem democracy and encouraging democracy um, through the town's legislative body as town moderator. Uh, it's a very important work that we do as a town meeting. And I wanna emphasize that. And that's why I'm so grateful that all of you have run and won and making the commitment. People look at town meeting, they. Some people will say, gee, it's antiquated. Uh, shouldn't we uh, modernize it in some way? Uh, I don't think so. Well, we've done like, um, we've done a few things like electronic voting and so forth, but the basics of town meeting have endured and it's really an important body. It's often said, described as, well, it's not neat and what's going on and so forth. It's not a matter of what's neat, it's a matter of what this body, its role and what it accomplishes. And our democracy is based on the fact that we need compromise among competing interests. That's the whole basis of our democracy. And town meeting embodies that at the local level um, for all towns, but obviously here for Belmont. So, it's very important body. Now, sometimes it can seem arcane and mystifying. So I'll try to lay out some of the broad parameters of town meeting to help you come in a little bit informed. 
And by the way, I think you have my email. Anytime, just shoot me an email with a question. I'm always delighted to answer and get right back to you. So what does the town meeting cover? What are the issues that are covered? Well, it's a broad list. Uh, one major area are zoning bylaws and general bylaws. So if we look at the upcoming town meeting, there are four bylaw amendments, capital budget, demoli dem demolition, membership of town committee, stormwater management. So that's one major area. There aren't any zoning bylaws uh, on amendments uh, here uh, in the upcoming session, but there often are. Another area critical, of course, and this is in June, is we approve town meeting budgets, capital budgets and the town's operating budget. Uh, that's perhaps the most important thing that town meeting does because the executive, the select board, cannot spend money that town meeting hasn't appropriated. Uh, other areas, the um, authorizing the purchase or sale of property. Uh, one of the article seven in this uh, upcoming town meeting acceptance of a public way for Oakmont Lane. Um, setting up building committees to spend money on specific projects. So article 13, which we'll, we'll take up in June, establishes a rink committee to build a new a building committee to build a new hockey rink. And that is another critical area for town meeting. And that will be uh, coming up for debate in June. If approved, one of the roles of moderator is to appoint building committees. I make appointments to the warrant committee, the capital budget committee, the permanent building committee and the bylaw review committee, and then building committees. So if town meeting approves a new building committee, I would then solicit input and make a uh, series of appointments to that building committee. Uh, other areas, uh, accepting state laws that allow for local acceptance, voting on non-binding resolutions. Now we have at least two of those coming up. Resolution supporting and changing them to state flag and seal. That's part of a statewide effort. Uh, and that's 11 and 12 is the general bylaw encouraging public participation. Uh, well, actually, that's not a, a resolution. The uh, Article 13 is a resolution requiring the solar panel on the middle and high school, and that'll be in June. Um, authorizing bonding for specific projects and uh, authorizing the select board to take specified action of one sort or another. So it's a very, very broad arena of issues that town meeting deals with. Uh, now let's talk about some definitions. Uh, upcoming is the annual town meeting. That's the main uh, town meeting, of course, and it is what it's, the name says, an annual town meeting. We divide generally our town meeting into segment A, that's in the May sessions for non-financial articles, segment B for financial articles. It's not hard and fast, but that's generally what we do. Uh, the number of meetings varies. My estimate, it's only an estimate, that this year is we'll probably need three meetings in May. And given the number of issues, we may need all four, I mean, three nights in May. We may need all four nights in June. And you've been sent, uh, sent those dates. In addition to the annual town meeting, there are special town meetings. And basically the special town meeting is to conduct any business that doesn't come at the time of the annual town meeting. Now, let me give you an example of um, something that may come up. The select board has closed the warrant and we have the end, I'll come to the warrant in a minute. We have that warrant. What if they want to put some item before town meeting in May or June? The annual town, meet, town warrant is closed. So then what we would hold is a special town meeting within the annual town meeting 
to deal with, let's say, this particular issue, a particular issue, whatever it is. But don't get confused about the logistics of, will adjourn annual town, I'll, I'll go through all the logistics and with Ellen's help and we'll adjourn one meeting and then we'll uh, launch the special town meeting to deal with that issue. Then we adjourn the special town meeting, resume the annual town meeting. Don't worry about all of that. It's all part of the legal um, niceties, if you will, that we have to go through, but they're the same thing. So what we debate in the annual town meeting is the same as a special town meeting, and there's no distinction. So don't uh, concern yourself about that. Now, the key thing is the warrant. So there's a warrant for any meeting, a warrant for an annual town meeting. You've received that. And that's what was signed by the select board on whatever the date was, and um, April 4, I guess. And this is the, so this is the overall guide to our upcoming annual town meeting. Now, within the warrant are a series of articles. So we have 22 articles that we're gonna cover in the town meeting between May and June. And as I said, they'll be divided into two segments. So uh, roughly, I think 13 minus two, we have 11 of the articles in May and 11 in June. Uh, though I think Junes are more likely to be more debatable and controversial. Um, and the article sets the parameters of discussion of that issue, the broad parameters. But then there are motions. So you've got the articles and the motions. And then you will receive the motions and they may be amended before town meeting. The motion is read into the record. And that's what we will debate one by one. On, on the town meeting nights. Now, even long-term town meeting members get confused between article and motion. The motion tends to be more focused than the article. And it's the, the article sets the broad parameters, but then the motion is the specific action before town meeting. And people sometimes say, well, wait a minute, the article says, but that's, not germane, what's, what's before you is that motion. And so I just wanna underscore that because this is something that, as I say, is causes ongoing confusion, even with long-term town meeting members. Um, and, and the motion is the specific action to be taken, appropriate X dollars, form a rink building committee for a purpose of X, et cetera. The other key thing is the amendments to a motion. My predecessor established a policy, which I think was really important. And that is any amendments need to be filed with the town clerk at least three business days before that article and motion will come before town meeting. So for discussion on Monday, May 2nd, an amendment would have to be received by Ellen by four o'clock on Wednesday, next Wednesday. Um, I have that right, right, Ellen? Is that the, uh, yeah. Yes, that's right, that's right. Um, so the, the import of that is that it wouldn't be fair to make an amendment on town meeting floor of any substance that the select board wouldn't have had a time to review, the warrant committee, if it's financial, the planning board, if it's that, the, the relevant committees would not have had any time to review, nor would you as town meeting members say, whoa, whoa, whoa what is this gonna do? How do I know how to vote? That would not be fair. So we've established this rule that I've continued from my predecessor three business days in advance. Occasionally, I will accept a very simple amendment on town meeting floor. Sometimes it's a clarifying, in, in discussion, there seems to be some confusion. Somebody offers a clarifying amendment. 
that will help us move forward and I will accept that and then we'll debate it. And if it's clarifying, presumably it'll pass, but it's non-substantive. So it's important to understand the timetable on the amendment, amendment process. Now, how do amendments, how do we debate amendments on town meeting floor? Let me take a specific article. Article three, the formation of a reconstituted and larger capital budget committee. It's been a lot of effort has gone into that. That will come before us in May. A town meeting member has already filed an amendment to clarify a piece of that, not to change it in any way. I mean, any sub substantial way. So here's what, unless he withdraws the amendment, what will happen at a town meeting is you will get a, you will hear the presentation from the sponsor, in this case, Chris Doyle, for the capital budget committee. She'll make the presentation. I will ask for votes from the various committees, select board, et cetera. They'll tell unanimously support or whatever. Then, she, Chris, will give the presentation on the merits of the and purpose of the overall article. Once she finishes that, I then turn, in this case, it's Bob McGaw who's filed it. I turn to Mr. McGaw and give him five minutes to read and explain his amendment. Chris Doyle would then have five minutes to rebut if she's not in favor, if they're not in favor of it. And then we open up for discussion on town meeting floor of the amendment only. So you have the context of the overall thing, which is fair, but the discussion starts with the amendment. And if there's an, five amendments, we go right through all the amendments. They either pass or they fail. Then we go back to the main motion as amended, if it's amended, and if it's not amended, we just take the main motion. But that's the process. So it's often still among people. In fact, what's the order? What's the sequence here? How do we, so it's the amendment process first, and then the vote in the final order. There's one amendment, one motion that you will hear from uh, often from town meeting floor. And they'll either have cheers or groans will follow. Uh, we don't hear that on Zoom, but if we're in person. And that is, Mr. Moderator, I move the question. What that is, quite simply, is I move to terminate debate. And this motion usually takes place after we've had significant discussion on a particular article. And we're not hearing anything much new, either for or against, and somebody makes that motion. That motion is not debatable, so we go immediately to a vote. And because it's not debatable, it requires a higher hurdle, namely two-thirds vote. My experience is that most times, because that motion is not made until a lot of debate has taken place. Mostly it's approved, even though there's two thirds required. It's usually more than that. Occasionally it's not. When it's, I've seen when it's offered too early in the debate, we haven't heard enough too early is a, you know, a judgment call, but we haven't heard much discussion. Somebody wants to move on and then it may not pass. But that's, you will hear that, especially because there are a lot of, uh, several contentious issues and so somebody's going to move the question and you have to decide have you heard enough debate is it fair to cut off debate because if debate's cut off the point is we move to a vote immediately no more discussion debate ends we now vote and then and and that on the motion or the amendment and that ends discussion of that that ends consideration of that particular uh, article um, some rules and procedures. Ellen referred to our Bible here, uh, town meeting time. This has been developed over the years by a number of long-term 
uh, moderators and other experts. It says a handbook of parliamentary, parliamentary law. Some towns follow Robert's rules um, fully, that they, they, they follow Robert's rules. Robert's rules are embedded in that, in this in many, many ways. They're, they're not, they're, they're rarely in conflict significantly, but they're different. So you need to know that this is what I refer to when I need some clarification on an issue. And you'll see, I'm not a lawyer, I mean, I've done this a, you know, a long time, but I'll refer, I'll, I'll take a recess and consult with George Hall, who's our town council, if I'm unclear about the proper procedure or law in a, uh, in, in a, in a given instance, because I wanna make sure that we do it right. So this, I, I read this every year before town meeting, uh, because it's dense and, uh, and, and uh, complex. You're not expected to know all the rules. That's my job and Ellen's job and town council, but it's there if you wanna understand the rules. And it becomes important if you're, issues like reconsideration, we won't get into that tonight because it's, um, it, it's, it's uh, <laughs> a hornet's nest and it's complex and it doesn't come up very often. But there will be instances when you want to refer to this. Uh, and as I say, always feel free to contact me anytime on any of this. Can Most of the votes, title? yes, yes. Go ahead. Could you repeat the title that you just of gave? Course. Something parliamentary something. A town meeting time, a handbook, of parliamentary law. Thank you. Yep. And it's available on Amazon as far as I understand it. Uh, but So just a few more uh, things. Most of the votes at town meeting are majority votes, but there are a few two thirds votes. And I mentioned one, the uh, uh, terminating debate requires two thirds. So, but most are majority votes. If it's two thirds, uh, I will announce that at town meeting, and it will be in in the uh, in in the motion. Uh, I town meeting. I, I, this is a parenthetical comment, but I want you to understand: town meeting takes an enormous amount of work of preparation. Um, I already mentioned Ellen's role and and the critical role. She and I work closely together and others as well, the IT department, um, but it's an enormous amount of work. And what we try to do is make this as clear as possible for town meeting members. That's our overall goal. So we look at presentations and we say, wait a minute, this is not helpful, it's not clear, and so on and so forth. There's just many, many things we do. As moderator on town meeting floor, I try to repeat at key times what it is we're doing so people don't lose track. Um, one of, I think on the issue of roll call voting, we had five amendments, maybe more. <laughs> and so we had to plan, okay, what's the right order for, what's the fair way to do this? And then some of the amendments were contradictory. And so there was a lot of confusion on town meeting floor about, okay, what are, what are we voting for? And so I repeat over and over when we were having the discussion and vote, this is what we're voting for. So I try to do that, but feel free. Well, in person, you can't raise your, I mean, on Zoom, can't quite raise your hand in that way, but, uh, or speak up from the floor. Right? But uh, raise your hand if you have a question on, uh, and we're nearing a vote and uh, we'll try to recognize you. Um, on coming to the microphone in, in uh, in-person town meeting, and I don't know whether we're gonna meet in person or in Zoom in June, 
in person town meeting, you go to microphone, stand in line. Here, you know from experience, not with town meeting, but virtual Zoom sessions, you raise your virtual hand and those hands are raised in order. And so what I do is call on you in order, in the order in which you're either standing at the microphone or raising your virtual hand. When I recognize you uh, on the virtual side, you will, uh, we will unmute you and you will state, and this is whether in person or in Zoom, state your name and precinct. And that's important. We have a court stenographer and she takes all of this down the, I mean, it's an incredible effort and she needs to hear who, who you are and your name. So your name and your precinct, and then you make your comments. Now, the, I have, I'll make a few final comments then I'll, then I'll turn it over to questions. We have had a rule of a five minute limit on comments uh, from town meeting members. I established that early when I was elect, first elected moderator. One of the issues that has arisen in recent town meetings, and I think even more so with the Zoom meetings, has been that we have a much more active town meeting than we've had historically. It's been a process, which is a good thing. More people wanting to comment and so forth. Um, and then, uh, but what that's meant is that when somebody calls the question and debate is terminated, number of people are often waiting in line. And it's not, I mean, we don't know if they're gonna say anything that will tip the debate one way or the other, but they feel cheated, if you will, that they haven't had a chance to speak. So what I'm doing on a trial basis, and I'll put out an email to this effect to all of town meeting, for this town meeting is to limit comments to three minutes. And my experience is that um, people can say everything they wanna say on a, in three minutes. And keep in mind, if somebody's already made the same points, you can focus your comments and highlight the aspects of previous testimony or comments. So it will be three minutes. And then what we do is allow two questions from, of let's say, a, there's an issue of the Capital Budget Committee and somebody says, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to ask a question of, uh, Ms. Doyle, Chris Doyle's presentation. And by the way, ask the question through the moderator, Mr. Moderator may ask. We do that to try to set a tone for the meeting and not have individual town meeting members end up badgering um, the uh, presenter. I mean, that's happened in the past and we're trying to have this be a civil, uh, and I'll get to that in a second, civil discussion. So Mr. Moderator, may I ask a question? Yes, of course. Then you ask the question for Chris Doyle, Mr. Moderator, may I ask a second question? Yes, of course, follow, follow up, ask that, Chris Doyle responds. Um, and then you may make a, if you wanna make a comment and say, based on that, I would urge that we approve our, the motion under uh, this motion because of blah, blah, blah and uh, make your comment or not. You're just happy to get the question answered. Um, so we try to move this along to balance, <clears throat> excuse me. On the one hand, want to allow as much debate as possible. On the other hand, we don't want it to, we don't want it to drone on indefinitely when there are not any new points being made. Um, so that's, you know, that's the overall balance. Um, I think that, cover, that covers um, all but a couple of things. We're gonna meet at this town meeting, sometimes we begin at uh, seven. We're, um, I was, and this will be in the email to all town meeting members. We're convening at 6.30 and we'll end at 10. Now, if we're, discussing an article and we're near debate on it, 
near the end of the debate and it's 10 o'clock, we'll go over to 10.05 or 10.10 10 and have a vote and then adjourn to the next night. But for planning purposes, we're going from 6.30 to 10. Um, one final, uh, two final points. Uh, we all know that this is a, a difficult time in our, in our country, and uh, there are a lot of, um, you know, a lot of hard feelings and, and a lot of pain and so forth. And um, so it's really important uh, to maintain, to have a civil debate on town meeting floor. Now, if somebody gets out of line, I will stop them um, but it, out of line as in imputing motives of the speaker. He, you know, he, I, I, he's always done this. I don't like him. I, I said, whoa, gavel comes down. We're not attacking personalities. We're not impugning motives. We're debating the issue, the motion before us. As I said earlier, the whole point of democracy, the whole basis of democracy is to sort through competing interests, competing views. And that's healthy. There's been some fantastic debates on town meeting floor. And they've ended up sometimes with a surprising outcome because the debate turned one way or the other. Other times, sometimes the, the presentation from whoever, the select board or what, what committee, it's not my word, it's not ready for prime time. As it turns out, people are kicking the tires on the issue. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Mark. This is, oh, I thought you. And so it starts to, you know, not, as I say, not uh, the town meeting members raise more and more questions. And so it may go down to defeat, but then it'll come back. I mean, there was a, a, an issue a few years ago um, presented with all good spirit, but it turned out that it uh, had a lot of holes in it, if you will. and. They went back to the drawing board a year or two later, they came back with a revised plan, unanimous support. Really critical role of town meeting. So the debate is important, it's, but please, please, please keep it civil. Finally, one last point, and that's the scope of discussion. This is a gray area. I mentioned the motion. We, debate must be within the scope of that motion. So people sometimes tend to go out from that and bring in some, I don't know, national issue or other states doing this, which aren't really germane to the discussion. I will then say, Mr. X, Ms. X, please stick to the scope of the discussion. I tend to let it let the individual go for a few seconds to see if they come back, but that's what I will do if they're moving beyond the scope. Um, I'll give you one small example uh, that could happen. Article four that we're gonna discuss um, is only next week on the Historic District Commission is putting forward the uh, uh, making permanent the demolition delay by law. And somebody might raise the question, Mr. Moderator, could I ask somebody to explain how the Historic District Commission is appointed because they're presenting this? That's, a, in my view, a fair question. It's a clarifying question. And I would allow that and I would turn to whoever and say, and, and they'd give a 15, 30 second answer. However, let's say somebody didn't like the Historic District Commission and didn't like the people on it or whatever. They said, I think it's, this Historic District Commission is going beyond its powers. I've gone to several meetings and I don't like the way they do this or that. Bang, bang, my gavel goes down. That's beyond the scope. We're debating the demolition, the demolition bylaw. That's the scope. Questions around that, fine. But no, we're not getting into discussion of 
the Historic District Commission, except for, as I say, a clarifying uh, question, something like that. So I'm not saying that will come up, but I wanted to use that as an example of, uh, of scope. So I've put forward a lot. Let me stop and answer any questions. And thank you again for this commitment you're making. Um, Mike, if that's okay uh, with you, I'm going to just add three little points. Just uh, yeah, oh, I meant to me ask you for a long that. time, and uh, Mike runs a pretty tight ship, so hopefully you'll uh, you'll all get to see how crisp he can be. Um, and, but I just wanted to add sort of three things. One, just so you all know, even though there may not be a timer that is visible on the screen. Uh, we time everybody. We time how long Mike's speaking. We time how long I'm speaking. We time every single speaker. And if uh, someone goes a little bit longer, it's entirely in this jurisdiction of the moderator to decide to cut someone off early or let them continue on till they get to their point if he feels that it's uh, appropriate. Um, so don't be thinking that we're asleep at the switch. We are, are typing every single person. And, and uh, Mike and I are sitting in the same room with a group of people. To, uh, to make this happen. Uh, secondly, I think it's really important to understand that there are th sort of three categories of town meeting members. Uh, certainly we've sort of established this over the years. One is a town meeting member who uh, vigorously reads every single document that we provide. They watch every selectman's meeting, or select board meeting, they watch the Warren Committee, the Capital Budget Committee meetings, they're watching Zooms, they're participating in every facet of, uh, of preparation to get ready for a town meeting. And they sometimes will come with a pretty fixed idea of how they intend to vote on a motion. Uh, the second group of people are the people who read what we send, maybe do a little bit of investigation on items that they're interested in, but really read what we send, take it in, attend the League of Women Voters night, um, and then they come with a general opinion of how they believe they're gonna vote, but with sort of an open mind to be influenced. And then there's a third group of people who uh, in some cases don't even read anything that we send them, and they expect to be fully educated from the beginning to the end. Uh, we're hoping that you decide to be sort of the first or the second, um, <laughs> at least. We'd like you to read and, and be a little bit aware, because remember, this is a representative town meeting. This is not you representing yourself. This is you representing your precinct, and that means your neighborhood and your community as a whole. So that's kind of first. And then the second thing I would like to, to just say um, is please don't just... Uh, be waiting to talk. Try to listen to what people are saying. And, and often there is something buried in there that uh, that might be a nugget that sort of turns the room and everyone is always surprised. And if you're not open to hear that, um, it might pass you by. And then the last thing I would say is if you agree with someone uh, who has already spoken, it's fine if you want to say something because maybe you want your your rep your residents to know that you're representing them and you have uh, you would like to go on the record about something. If you agree with someone, feel free to say, I agree with Mike and uh, I, I support this article. I agree with Mike and all the points he's made and then sit down or just turn off your microphone. You don't have to use two minutes or three minutes to just say you agree with someone. It's okay to say you agree or disagree. You don't always have to give a reason. So those are my only additions. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Ellen. Questions, comments? Can I ask a question? Um, do you typically will take questions about the article before you get into a debate about the article? No, we go right into discussion uh, of the article. Uh, somebody, as I said, allow town meeting members to answer excuse me, to ask a couple, a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. The assumption, and it's embedded in what uh, Ellen just said, the assumption is that town meeting members will have done some homework, especially mm -hmm. on the issues that they care about, and will have had many of their questions answered. And that is why we have the league night. That's why we sent out the materials and, and give people an opportunity to reach out with questions in advance um, so that 
we can limit the number of questions. I'll put it another way, that there will be some common understanding before we get into the discussion of town meeting. Now, it's always gonna be some questions or clarifications. So somebody, for example, in a presentation may say something, uh, something X. I said, oh, I didn't know about that. And I thought the opposite. So I need to ask. And so I raise my hand and when my turn comes, I ask a question. And do I understand this correctly? But for the basic education around a given article, we ask town meeting members to do homework in advance. And to that end, if you have a question about a particular article, and um, usually we try to make sure that there's contact information on each one of those information sheets, you should feel free to use it. If you want to get in touch with someone because you need more information, you can always contact the town clerk's office and we'll give you their, their contact information and make the connection for you. Oh, that's great. Thanks, Ellen. Sure. That's helpful. Sure. I see Paul, Paul had his question, his hand up. Quick question. When when is there when are you guys gonna make a decision about in person or Zoom for the June uh, town meetings? We're setting up a uh, meeting with the with West Chen Public Health and the Public Health Department in early May. Mm -hmm. So I hope we'll make a decision. I want to make a decision by May 10 or by May. The second week of May, May 11 or 12. Yeah, we put together a, a schedule to uh, so that Mike can make the recommendation and make the decision uh, before the first segment of town meeting is over so he can let people know that in person. Um, I don't see any other hands up, I'm watching. Yeah, I had a question. Um, yeah, so I was a little bit confused about you, you mentioned the difference between the uh, you know, the warrant articles and the motions. And the, are the motions going to be are those sent out separately, or is the def or is just like a default the motions or what's in the warrant articles? Or like I, don't, I didn't really quite understand the. You actually, everybody has already received the warrant, which is one, yes. uh, it's kind of a giant document um, yes. with all the legal language in it. And uh, separately, you received a set of motions, uh, probably a week after or, or four or five days after we sent out the warrant. Um, you most likely, from what I'm understanding, we will be receiving uh, uh, changes of uh, a different draft of a couple of the motions. I understand they're still working on a couple of them. Uh, they've been having a lot of conversations and um, and I think the select board is meeting about uh, one or two of the items tonight. So I expect to be sending out uh, uh, revised motions on Thursday morning. Wednesday, what's today, one, Monday? Wednesday morning, <laughs> yeah. And Keep in mind, there are a lot of moving pieces. So uh, <laughs> Ellen is sending out uh, almost every day those mm -hmm. town meeting nears and the town meeting takes place between individual meetings, um, materials. So mm -hmm. um, she's assiduous in doing this and uh, you need to pay attention to your emails because there will be revised motions there will be clarifications, right. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, actually, if you, um, people haven't really asked in this session, but just in case, um, the pattern that we follow for letting you know what the Zoom link is going to be for uh, town meeting, we'll usually send that uh, for the Monday session. I'll probably send it on, uh, on Saturday. Um, before that, uh, the reason is we want it pretty close to the top of your email box, your inbox, and um, we also don't give it out early because people have a tendency to, to try and log in early and then they get frustrated and they try to contact us and say, I can't get in, I can't get in, but we don't open either the Zoom or the, the turning point um, until the 
you know, 5.30 at night, we will be opening up uh, the Zoom accounts with turning points so everybody can check and make sure that everything's working properly. They have an hour to kind of check in. And if you're really a, a nervous person, check in early and you can always make calls to us and we'll make some corrections or get the tech team on you to uh, to get you in. We have a really good um, a group of people who work to make town meetings successful. So uh, hang in there and you'll be getting those kind of critical items, uh, as I said, probably on Saturday, I imagine. Yes, Elisa. Uh, yeah, um, I understand that if we wanted hard copies of the warrants, the, the library has copies. They are, uh, they have it on their uh, website. They can print you a copy. There, there's a box right outside of town hall, um, right on the front porch step. Um, as if you're coming in, there's a big clear box that says materials for town meeting members. You're welcome to come and pick them up. Um, we print, uh, we used to have to print uh, probably 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I guess, when I first became the town clerk, we used to have to print them and mail them to mm -hmm. all 300 town meeting members. Now, thankfully, we do pretty much everything by email. And then our agreement with town meeting members is uh, established. We did that, I don't know, about eight years ago, that if we are, if the whole collection of documents we're sending out in any one time is 30 pages or more, we will print a limited number of those and uh, and try and keep a supply of those. But if it's under 30 pages, you can always ask us to print it or the uh, library to print it. It's uh, our box is available 24 hours a day. So um, we used to do it in the police station and we realized we could just do it outside our box and, and it's been pretty good. So I think we have probably 20 copies still sitting outside. And do those get the updates? Like once you make the updates, you have to redo yeah. those? Yeah. We we stuff them into the ones that are there. That's right. Okay. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> sure, no problem. And you know, we we really try to limit how many we do. We're actually down to printing for the first segment. We we usually print less than we print about fifty copies or forty copies. And uh, for the second segment, it, a lot more people want them because the warrant committee report itself is usually about sixty five pages. So. Um, so that one does take, uh, have a, a few more copies there for me. Seems to work. And will the meetings, uh, town meeting start at 6.30 or seven? Uh, six, 6.30. Okay. Uh, and then, you, I didn't say this, but you'll see that we, have some preliminaries um, at the beginning of town meeting. Um, and then we also have uh, under article one reports, updates for town meeting members. So we'll have an update uh, on the library project, for example, probably on May 4, the second night of town meeting. And then the June segment, we'll have a number of those. So. That happens at the beginning of the evening under Article 1. I try to space out the reports so we don't have five reports on a given evening, but spread it out. Uh, and then after the Article 1 reports, and there's no discussion under Article 1, let's give the report. Then we turn to the business of the town meeting. I don't see anybody else with their hands up. Or I think that's where you are, Mike. Well, great. Thank you, Ellen. And thank you all. A couple of final comments. Again, uh, I think you have my email, mike.j.widmer at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments, suggestions, if you disagree with something I've done, fine. Let me know because I'm trying to, all the time, I'm trying to. Uh, do the best, run the best kind of meeting. Obviously, it's been much more challenging under Zoom. We pulled it off, but uh, we make some refinements based on our experience. So be in touch. And the other thing I would say, be patient with yourself and with the pro it's, you know, it's, it's not always easy to grasp right away what's happening. Uh, on, uh, I mean, some of it's straightforward, but uh, uh, be patient and uh, you'll get the hang of it. And don't be afraid to ask questions in between sessions, whatever. 
and thank you again for your commitment. I'm I'm really pleased at how many new town meeting members we have. So thank you. I think it's 52 or 54 uh, I mean, it's, new town it's meeting remarkable. members. We have, yeah, so we have 288 elected from each one of the precincts. Plus there's a, a series of uh, at-large members. Mike is one on one. And um, so it's, a, it's a great, we have more than 50 new people. So you are not alone. I have a feeling we'll be going over some of the procedures a little bit more each, each night. So. All right, with that, I think I'm going to end the meeting unless anyone else has anything. If you do and you can't get in touch with Mike as in you forgot his uh, email address or anything, just call down to the town clerk's office. We're happy to, to talk to you. And, um, you know, we won't even reveal who called. If there's a question that you want uh, anonymously to pass forward, please feel free to do that too. And uh, with that, I'm going to end the meeting. So thank you. Thank, thank you all. so much. Thanks. Thank Take you care. Very much. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.